So in today's video, we're going to be playing a team that epitomizes success. It's one of the most successful clubs in world football, certainly one of the most, in fact, the most in European football as well. We welcome Real Madrid to Villa Park in the Champions League. Oh, and we play Spurs too. How you doing everybody and welcome to part 11 of the Aston Villa save here on FM24. I'm Stu, thank you for watching today's video where, as I mentioned before, the first thing is Real Madrid in the Champions League, because how hard can that be? And then we've got 5th place Tottenham in the Premier League, of which we're currently in 2nd, because everything's going really well. And if you're excited to see how we get on in the two games today, don't forget to leave a like on the video for me, and to subscribe so you don't miss any of the nonsense that comes out of this face right here. Since you were last with us again... It's all been rosy. If I'm being honest with you, it's all been rosy. Now, I do believe we did make a few transfers after you last saw us. So, I'm just going to double check and then we'll show you the ones that we brought in. Oh yes, there were just a few. The first one we brought in was Lukas Sukic. Uh, we brought him in from RB Salzburg. I don't want to say RB. They can be called Red Bull Salzburg. Um, Red Bull Salzburg. We brought him in for not a lot of money really. £10.5 million. Pounds, but it's very much an invest... Oh, that's the wrong screen. It's very much an investment, this one. Uh, because he's got a... Di well be honest with you, he had four and a half star potential when I signed him, but that's fine. He's still got potential, and look at his value. I'm, I'm kind of thinking more that we can move him on and sell him for a profit. Um, but he's gone out on loan, he's gone to Braga, he's having a decent season there, actually. He's on a 7.05 rating in the two games he's played. He's not played much, but he is developing quite nicely. So he'll either become a decent squad player to have, or we'll move him on and we'll make a tidy profit on him. At £10.5 million, pounds, I think that's a really nice piece of business. I mean, at the moment, he's a leading championship player. Hopefully when he comes back, it'll be Premier League quality. And then we can decide what to do with him. But if we need to move him on, I'll happily make a profit on him. And the next one, um, well, all of the other ones are, apart from one alone, um, offerings that we decided to bring in for cover. Julio Cizio is the player I brought in to be the Ansu Fati cover. Um, we have got him until, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure... January, yeah, we've got him until January, so he's going to be covering until Ansu Fati is fit. I mean, he's a wonder kid. In theory, he's someone we should just be signing and using all the time, but I mean, you know, if I could choose, I think I'd choose to swap him and Ansu Fati around. I'd keep Ncizio and try and sign him next season, but he's barely played for us. He's only played the one game, didn't play long enough to get a rating, but he's here for some cover. We might be ruining his career by bringing him here, but you know what? He'll do a job for us. He will do a job indeed. Uh, we've then also got this guy uh, from Corinthians, one of the few players who doesn't have a face uh, with the face pack that I've got. Gabriel Moscardo. We brought him in from Brazil. Again, £10.5 million. Pounds. He could raise up a little bit. Again, it's because of that potential. Now, I have tried to loan him out. It's not worked. So, he has been playing in under-21 football. He is still growing a little bit, but we will try and move him on in January to get to another club so he can get some more experience. But again, this is one where he either becomes a first-team regular for us in the future or we sell him for a profit. I'm leaning towards the latter at the moment because... I don't know. I've got, I've got a weird feeling about him that he might be a waste of money in terms of one to get first team play, but maybe not so much in terms of getting some value in. As a backup centre back, just in case, I bought in Luca Perrin. Um, 25 years old. He's not very good, but if we need a body, he can play there and as a defensive midfielder. Again, playing for the under 21s exclusively, unlikely to make an appearance, but I thought let's just bring someone in who's there in case we need another centre-back. Because I, in a nice way, our under-21s team isn't the best. So this felt like the right thing to do. And then the final one was a bit of a last-minute, let's bring someone in, just as a cover option for a bunch of positions. Rafael Guerrero. Um, he can play left-back, he can play left-wing if we need him to, he can play in the middle, he can play defensive mid. He covers so many different positions. I'm a massive fan of his as well in FM. I've used him before. He's just such a great player to have in a squad. Not what he once was, obviously. He's 30 years old. Handy squad player. He's played a couple of times. Not really set the world on fire. I'm not expecting him to. And that kind of rounded out the squad. We didn't have any major player sales after Esri Conte. In fact, we had none after Esri Conte. So that was the last big one. And that has left us with that as the run. So you obviously saw those two games. We've lost one game against Liverpool 3-0. But other than that, we've been pretty solid. Now... I don't know if we've been as explosive as we were last season when we started. Because we were just banging the goals in for fun, I remember. And to be fair, it was kind of a bit of a mixed one as well. I mean, defensively, we're better this season so far. Currently got the fifth best defence in the league. That's better than like the ninth or tenth that we ended up with last season. But 
We are still conceding more often than not, but we are still also outscoring teams. I mean, Lamar had a great uh, August. Eliawahi hasn't really taken off as much as I was hoping he would do. He scored one goal for us. He's got a couple of assists. It's a bit disappointing, if I'm honest. Um, but I have to say, we're managing it. It's been a squad game for us. So I'm hoping Elia Wahi, we've given him a target because we keep saying to him, you're not playing well enough. For a three-star player, he's really not showing it at the moment, which is very disappointing. Oh, he scored two goals. Beggeth your pardon. He scored two goals. I mean, he's more than good enough to get goals for us. But he's really, really struggling. So fingers crossed, he'll just kick on us. I mean, he's... The, Euro, the under-21s, look at the amount of goals he's got for them. It's insane. But, I mean, you look at his record for the Premier League. If you just look at his starts, five starts, two goals, two assists, it actually looks a lot better than it has been. So, I'm hoping we can get him to kind of kick on a little bit. I mean, apparently he'd be a decent deep line forward. I disagree with that because his passing needs to be decent and it's really, really not. I'd like him to be decent as a pressing forward because I actually think Although the aggression isn't quite there, I think he might be a little bit better at that. Because I think advanced forward, he's just getting himself a bit too isolated at the moment. But then I think he didn't have a preseason with us, so I'm probably being a bit hard on him, if I'm being honest. I mean, Ollie Watkins hasn't been that much better. He has scored a couple of goals. But again, only a couple of goals. Well, three goals. But still, that's not exactly setting the world on fire. So it is what it is. I mean, the real star of the first part of the season has been Douglas Louise. I mean... His last few performances have let him down a little bit, but nine starts, uh, sorry, nine appearances, three goals, four assists. He's been sensational. He's had a couple of rough games recently, but he's still a fantastic player for us. So it's been a bit of a difficult one. But that leaves us with the Premier League table looking like this. With all things being equal in games played, we are currently second, only by two points. Thomas Lamar is our top goal scorer. He's also the second top goal scorer in a very low scoring league at the moment. Of course, Erling Haaland is top of that. Don't have any other players in any positions here at all, but one thing I did want to show you is season preview. We're previewed to finish eighth. I didn't see what it was last season, but yikes. I feel like we're going to smash that with how we're doing it at the moment. I feel like we're absolutely going to smash that, and that's my light going off. Bear me one second. It's being fiddly, so I'm just going to go with one light on this side and not one light on this side for the rest of this one. Um, I'm going to leave it charged, and hopefully it'll be okay for the second game. But yeah. All things considered, we're doing rather well. Defensively, is still a bit of an issue, but again, I'm quite happy. The only thing we're not great with is our defensive record at the moment in terms of cards. Worst in the league, 20 yellow cards overall. That needs to get better. So I have had a look at the tactics and had a bit of a fiddle. I've not really done a lot on that side of things, but I've had a bit of a fiddle in general because in particular in the, uh, in the Everton game, we went 2-0 up in this last game. And then just switched off. And then they dominated us. And we got very, very lucky to come away with that. So the mentality of the team is a bit of an issue. So we might need a bit of an overhaul in the summer looking at certain things. In terms of the actual squad, I mean, I'll go through to the team selection and show you here. In terms of issues, um, Carlos actually just been injured. He's just come back and played for the under-21s, which is a bit of a mistake on my part. Can't play in this one. Ansu Fati still quite a while away. Um, Diogo Dalot actually has started his rehabilitation might be back in time for December if we're lucky. Um, and Jacob Ramsey's picked up a knock recently as well. He's back in two days. I've got him on the bench just so he's I filled the space on the bench, basically. But he won't be playing today. So this is going to be the 11 for the game against one of the best teams in the world in Real Madrid. It is Emi Martinez in goal. Cash, Biol, Torres and Digne in defence. Aya, Gray and Douglas Luiz in the midfield with Buendia and Lamar supporting Wahi up front. So I'm giving Wahi the chance ahead of Watkins. Let's see whether we can repay us. I also am starting Archie Gray because Archie Gray, what a season he is having, by the way. Premier League, nine appearances, one goal, four assists, 7.29. He scored twice in the Champions League and got an assist in two games. I mean, he's going to be an England international this season if he carries that up. He is looking every bit the player we hoped he would be. And even though he's only got shots, long shots of 11, he's finishing his nine. Real threat outside the box. But he's just... A lot of his passes, then... It's not the passing. It's the timing and it's the vision to see the player there. It's not like the passes are very impressive. It's just he'll see that there's a short pass available when others might not. He's been great. <sighs> but deep breath. Let's get into it. I am expecting us to really struggle in this game because it's Real Madrid. However, I feel like in this save, there's been times when we've played really well against big teams... And it's been the smaller teams that we've really struggled against. So we will see what happens. But 
I am hopeful. Elia Wahi, what a, what a performance it would be if he could sort things out and get us going here. I am debating for future, maybe next season, I am debating that we change things around and we go with a 4-2-3-1 just so the strike has a bit more support. I mean, look at the state of their team, by the way. They've added Victor Asimen to it. That is utterly disgusting, quite frankly. Um... I am debating that because why he has looked quite isolated at times, but then he has had chances. But then, because he was a bit wasteful with a few chances that he had... Start the game, why not, Stu? Um, because he was wasteful with some of the chances he had earlier in the season, I put him on to shoot less often in the hope that he'd pick his chances a bit more. I've turned that off because he was looking a bit anonymous, so I'm hoping maybe by turning that off, we get a bit more opportunity from him. It might work, it might not, I don't know. Um, it looks good to see that we've had an early chance. Um, I'm expecting, again, Real Madrid to absolutely batter us here. I won't be upset if that does happen because they are a, just a class above. I mean, I haven't actually shown you how we've done in the Champions League so far. We've won both of our games and we've looked pretty solid doing it. So, I wouldn't be upset if we lose against Real Madrid here. I mean, my aim is as long as we get through to the... I mean, obviously, if we get through automatically to the knockout rounds, I'd be great. We have to go through, like, the rounds... The next round, the playoffs. I think I don't know if it's called playoffs, but that blue section there. If we are in there, I'm happy. If we're in the green section, I'm delighted. But I will take being in the blue section, giving us a chance to get through to the knockouts proper. Right, we've got a chance here. Digne cuts into the box. He actually gets the ball taken off of him, but loses it. And then it's Dio Douglas Luiz. I think it's a Diego Luiz for some reason. It's Douglas Luiz from a couple of defensive mistakes from Real Madrid who puts us in the lead at Villa Park. We lead in the Champions League against Real Madrid. Well then. I mean, Lamar, lovely pass here to Luis. Luis kind of stuffs it up a little bit. Eventually gets onto the ball. And we do lead by a goal to nil. And I am very happy about it. Um, I mean, it was messy from Real Madrid. I mean, Lamar and uh, Digne didn't really link up that well there. But they managed to kind of blag it and get it through. Right, Digne into Luis. Luis into Lamar. Lamar into Buendia. Buendia going for a goal. Doesn't work. And um, Wendy has been a bit up and down recently. He has started to show a little bit more form. But I don't think he's quite the same player as he was before the injury. So I'm kind of already thinking ahead to season three. We are very close there. And you know what? I'm talking about the man, Emiliano Buendia. The tiniest man in the world to score a header. Um, he's gone and made it 2-0. But is it going to be 2-0 or is it going to get disallowed? It's been reviewed by VAR. And the answer is it has been given. And we lead by two at Real Madrid, well, at Real Madrid, at Villa Park, against Real Madrid. Bial with the header. I tell you what. Bial is a rock of a central defender. I really... I mean, Mark Gueye might fall out with me. Because Bial might end up starting more games than him this season. Because... He's just solid. He just looks solid as a rock. Gwei has had rough, like, a rough start at Villa Park. And I don't think it will continue. I think, I mean, look at the touch there from Archie Gray. And Elia Wahi is offside. I was about to praise him to high heaven. But he's offside. I've just seen the flagger. It's not going to get given. It's not going to, it's not been given, no. But look at Gray here. Gray gets the ball taken off of him. But he somehow finds a way to get the ball to another player. And Christopher Ayer just plays it through. Elio Wahi's desperately unlucky there. But it's good to see Wahi getting in these positions and putting the ball in the back of that, even if it's not being given. Because eventually, he's going to get a chance that will be given. And Douglas Suiz nearly makes it three there. And we are all over Madrid at the moment. Absolutely all over them. Right, it is corner o'clock. Let's see if we can get Bial on the end of another one because he nearly scored with that one before. He's there again, doesn't quite get it, but the ball is back to Lamar. Lamar chips in, looking for the header, Wahi. At the end of the day, Wahi not really tall enough to be able to bother people in that way. I think a big problem as well sometimes is we do play in a kind of a wingery kind of way. Maybe we need to try and play things through the middle a little bit more. Utilise Gray, utilise Louise, getting the ball forward. Oh my word, lads, lads. Oh, let's not do that. Let's. <laughs> oh, you normally get punished for things like that. Right, Wahi doing some good running there. Looks back, gives the ball backwards because he couldn't continue his run. That's actually really smart play. I'm quite happy with him doing that. I would have liked to see him do something a bit more proactive. But you know what? If the run wasn't on, the run wasn't on. I'll take it. Right, Pau Torres. Looking for options going forward. Gets it to Digne. Digne. Realise he can't go forward. Again, we're 
quite intelligent with what we're doing at the moment. And that's a lovely pass through to Douglas Luiz. And it ends up with Wahi and Elia Wahi. There's no flag up, has scored his third goal for Villa. And it's against Real Madrid. And that is more of what I want to see. I'd like to see him getting more involved in the game as a whole. But if he's going to be around there when mistakes happen, I'm quite happy with it. Right, Power Torres gets to Lamar. Lamar puts it through to Douglas Luiz. And it's Danilo who makes the mistake. And Douglas Luiz ends up accidentally playing it through to Wahi. And Wahi ends up just putting it in the back of the net. It's technically a Thomas Lamar assist, which I love as well. Right, what a first half this has been. Right, BL to Aya. Aya out to Power Torres. Power Torres now. Looking for options. Goes to Luca Digne into Christopher Aya. Aya, who's playing there more often now than Bubakar Kamara. Because Bubakar Kamara, I love him. I think he's a great player. Had some really good moments for us last season. He's had one, maybe two good games this season. But has looked really out of sorts, actually. I don't know whether maybe he had his head turned by... Was it Bayern Munich who put the offer in for him? We nearly scored a fourth there. That would have been ridiculous. I don't know whether maybe he's had his head turned. And if he has, maybe we need to think about, do we move him on? Because there's value there. There's definitely value. We've done a short corner here. Uh, Lamar to Wendia. Wendia, I don't think this is going to work out. Gray gets taken out there, and unfortunately, a ball doesn't come through to him. Uh, could go through him to someone else like it normally does. Real Madrid on the attack here. Douglas Luiz, really cynical foul. Massive fan of it. Massive fan of it because that just broke up their attack there. And we are going to go into half time. Three goals to the good at Villa Park against the greatest European team of all time in Real Madrid. That is sensational. Right, we've got two yellow cards. Let's tell the players to calm themselves down. Um, I mean, Matty Cash not having a good game. We have had a bit of a falling out with Matty Cash. Um, it's interesting. Archie Gray, biggest team he's played. He's not playing well, but he's not playing awfully either. So, I'm good with it. And we've got Tillemans who we can bring on if we need to. So, I'm not overly worried about that. There is a part of me that's thinking, should we... Because we've been going down the wings quite a bit. Maybe we go through the middle. Just to mix things up a little bit. Right, Lamar gets the ball here. Goes into Pau Torres. Pau Torres now looking for options. He's going to go out wide to Digne. He does indeed. Digne now. I mean, just doesn't go back to Lamar. He goes to Pau Torres instead. Right, Aya. Aya. Don't dwell on the ball too much. Right, Archie Gray. Archie Gray goes out to Buendia. Lovely pass. Lovely pass back to Gray. Gray gets it to Wahi. Wahi just puts it wide. He's so unlucky. It's a goal kick. Lovely movement from Wahi there, though. He just couldn't quite get the finish right, which is annoying because that's the one thing he has been able to do, mostly offside, but still. Right, Torres into Gray. Gray, lovely touch to Louise. Louise now. Wahi can continue the run. He might be in the right place. And Elia Wahi scores two goals in the Villa shirt for the first time. There's no offside. We lead by four here against Real Madrid, which is very unexpected, but very welcome at the same time. Lovely stuff. Right. Thomas into Gray. One touch from Gray is lovely. Douglas Louise makes the run into the box. You can see why he has the run superbly timed and just taps it in. It's so easy for them. Gray was a huge part of that with that one touch pass to Douglas Louise. Douglas Louise having a fine game against Real Madrid. I mean, is this an advert for some of these players to be signed by bigger clubs? It might be, and that might be something we need to consider. But 4 0 against Real Madrid. What a performance. Right. I mean, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but we're at the point where we can start resting players. Which is utter madness when you stop and think about it. Right. Tillemans off on for Archie Gray. We'll give Gray a bit of a rest. Um, Lamar and Brendy are having good games. So I'm actually going to bring on Musa Diaby and let's see whether we can get a good game out of him. I'm going to leave Wahi on. Wahi's on a hat trick. I am leaving him on the pitch. Um, and we'll leave things at that for... Mm, no, do you know what? Young Quoto. Young Quoto can come on. Let's give Jan Cuoto some minutes. Especially if we've fallen out with Matty Cash, we might need to give him some minutes. Right, let's see if Real Madrid can try and come back into this game. I mean, 4-0, you'd think it's unlikely. Stranger things have happened. I'm still expecting them to have an attacking threat in this last half an hour in game. Right, Wahi can't get on the ball there. But Douglas Luiz gets it back to Wahi. And Elia Wahi, after we've had our chat with him, similar to Ollie Watkins last season, remember, we had to have a chat with Ollie. Next game, he scored a hat-trick. I mean, the game after that, he then got injured. But touch wood, that's not going to happen against Spurs. But Elia Wahi has a hat-trick. Douglas Luiz intercepts. Taps it down to Wahi. And is there a bit of an understanding there between Douglas Luiz and Elia Wahi? Maybe there is. But Elia Wahi is a hat-trick hero for Aston Villa for the first time. And it makes me feel a bit better about spending that money on him instead of people like Calvert-Lewin or Tammy Abraham. 
Makes me feel better about missing out on uh, Jimenez as well. And I thought Pau Torres was going to make it six there. I mean, this is obscene. Real Madrid. I don't know what they must be thinking. I mean, as if they're real. I mean, this is virtual, obviously. But, you know, if this were real, what would they be thinking? What would the club be thinking? What would the fans be thinking? It would be obscene, wouldn't it? Oh, I hope I get to see something like this in my lifetime. It'd be amazing. Right. Real Madrid are trying to come back here. They're, it's almost like they've remembered their Real Madrid. Tukamani into Rodrigo. And that is a goal for them. I'm not that disappointed with that. It is Real Madrid after all. They have got a goal back. But, I mean, it's way too little, way too late at this point. Right. It's substitute o'clock. We made three before. Let's make a couple more. Um, Christopher Ayers had a really good game. Jan Cuerta has had an awful game since coming on. So, maybe he's to blame. Um, I'm actually going to take Emi Wendia off. And I don't really know what the change is, to be honest with you. Maybe it's John McGinn. Should we bring John? Yeah, do you know what? Let's bring John McGinn on. Let's swap DRB and McGinn around. So McGinn plays on the left. He tends to play a little bit better out on the left. I don't know why. Um, Tillemans is struggling to pick up the pace of the match. I am thinking Luca Digne. Let's bring him off for Miranda as well. Let's do that. That feels like a lovely idea. And let's just see out the game, shall we? 5-1. I'm quite content with this game. We Winning this game was never the target. It was just not getting embarrassed. And we've ended up embarrassing them. So whatever happens from here on out. I don't, as long as there's not like a mass amount of injuries. And I'm touching the table. Which is made of wood. Just to try and stop the jinxing effect happening. Then I'll be happy. Miranda, former Barcelona youth player of course. And Eli Awahi has just scored a fourth goal against Real Madrid. I mean, I've been very critical of him in between the last episode and this episode when I've been playing this game. And he's just, it's like he's remembered, oh yeah, I meant to score goals. Well, I'll go and score some goals then, shall I? And that's what he's done. I mean, look at the match momentum. It's utterly ridiculous. Right, Cruz whipping the ball into Camavinga. I mean, we get very, very lucky there. It's a double save from Martinez. I'm a bit surprised. Ah, there was an offside. I mean, that looks like it's in, quite frankly. I think we should have been done over there. That should be 6-2. But I'm not that bothered. <laughs> I'm really not that bothered. Um, wow. I didn't expect us to uh, to be having a 6-1 against Madrid at the beginning of this episode. I thought this would be one where we have to consolidate and just accept things for what they were. But what a performance. In particular, why he could have had five if that one hadn't been disallowed. But what a performance. John McGinn getting on the assists as well, which is lovely to see. That was sensational. That very much was sensational. Right, well, no pressure, but we now have to do that against Tottenham, um, which is obviously a little bit, I was going to say it's a bit more challenging. It's not really, is it? That was the challenge in the episode. I mean, why he is now tired, again, this is the problem. He's not had a break. He's not had a proper pre-season. So we do need to be careful with him. So he might not start the next game, despite hitting four against Real Madrid. I mean, we've set him a target of hitting an average rating of 7. So, I feel like he's on the way to doing that. Right. Um, I'm going to go away. And we're going to play the Tottenham game when we come back. And hopefully, we have as good a result as that nonsense. Because that is just a lot of nonsense in the best possible way. Back in a minute. Time for the game against Tottenham Hotspur. Who, again, are fifth place in the Premier League. And, change of heart. Elio Wahi has recovered enough. I am going to give him a game. Um, his training load is quite heavy, um, but I'm going to give him a chance to see if he can replicate the form of the last game in this one. So Wally Watkins will start on the bench. So this is the 11 that we're going to use. It is Martinez in goal, Cash, Biol, Mings and Digne in the defence with Aya, Gray and Douglas Louise in the middle with Wendria and Lamar supporting Wahi up front. So the change we've made is we're putting Tyra Mings in there in the hope that he can do a job for us. Fingers crossed. We can get a good result. Let's do it and let's see what we can do. Um, Jacob Ramsey is technically fit for this game. However, I have left him out purely because he's only just come back. And he has been out for a little while. So I'm going to leave him to have a game or two in the under-21s. And then we'll see how he's doing. I mean, the person who would have missed out is John McGinn. But he came on and got an assist against Real Madrid in the last game. How can I leave him out after that? It would be obscene. It really would be. So... I feel like it's the right decision to make. I mean, he's probably going to disagree with it, but he's going to have to deal with it. Right, early corner here. Buendia whipping it in, looking for her head of Biol, who puts it just wide, which is really unfortunate. Um, I mean, Biol just looks like an absolute brute. I mean, 
Okay, he's more physical and he's taller than Mark Gwaii, so that's something. I mean, maybe the future partnership is Bial and Gwaii. Maybe we're looking at this slightly wrongly, because Power Towers is, what, 27, I think? Um, so he's on the older side compared to um, both of them. And also, you know, Tyra Mings is like 31, so he's going to be going soon. So maybe, just maybe, we've got our forever defensive pairing. Um, there's an offside there from Lamar, which is okay. I'm not too bothered about that. But maybe that is our future forever pairing, is Bial. And then Gwei, and maybe we just need to work out which one goes on which side. I don't know about you, I'm really struggling to see the ball on this. I wish the ball was like a brighter colour because I am really struggling to kind of keep an eye on where the ball is. I mean, it's with Digne at the moment. Douglas Louise now into Gray. Gray, lovely pass to Wahi. Wahi gets tackled by Romero, but Wendia has the chance and it goes just over the bar. Um, also, it's worth pointing out, Leon Bailey does now play for Tottenham Hotspur. Well, at least we sold him last season. Interesting to see, though. Not in the starting lineup, not on the bench. After the game, if I can remember, which usually means I won't, I could have a look and see whether he's still there or whether they moved him on. I've got a feeling they moved him on because he's nowhere to be seen. Or he's injured. That's always an option as well. And we're playing really well, but we're not having any shots on target at the moment. So we need to do something about that. Um, why he's apparently having a decent game, though, which is nice to see. I'm not too worried about having a 25 goal a season striker. As long as we get the goals from other places, that's a bit poor from us. Right, can Dignier do something with Kulazewski? Stop that ball from coming in. I mean, he's doing a decent job, but it is whipped out wide. It's Ben's Kurt into Davies. Davies, when Deer tries to do a tackle, it doesn't really work out. Davies is probably going to get the ball back in. Into San. I didn't see where the ball goes. It's gone out for a throw somehow. I mean, I'm, I don't know about you. I am really struggling to see where this ball is. Um... On this, I just want to check one thing. Bear me one moment. It's going to sound really daft. I want to check if I had a nightlight on my computer. I don't, so I don't really understand what was going on. Um, I'm tempted. Oh, and of course, we don't have a right back on the bench. Oh, that's a problem. Okay, Matty Cash, who not been having a good game anyway, he's injured. So we're going to have to bring on someone. I mean, I'm going to bring Christopher Iyer down to there and change him to a fullback. And then Matty Cash is going to come off for Bubikar Kamara. And we'll give Kamara a chance to have a decent game. Um, I just want to make sure that you are still doing what I asked you to, which is Huang Win Son. Let's mark you. You've got decent marking, so hopefully you can do a decent job. But we'll bring on Bubikar Kamara in the hope that he can kind of revitalise his season. Because, again, it's not been a good one for him so far. I was having a really decent game as defensive mid, so it's a bit of a shame to have to move him there. I am also going to put work ball into box on because we're having the chances. We've only had one on target, which we've only just had, so bit of a disappointment. So maybe, just maybe, now we'll kick into life. Right, Wendia looking to get into Douglas Louise. That has got to be a shot on target, surely. So that's now got to go up to two, unless it was going to hit the post. But I would just give that as on target, surely. It's not been given as on target. It's been given as off target. That's hilarious. Well... Good first half from us, but not very productive. So we need to be better in front of golf. So let's just try and step things up a little bit. I'll just tell why he's got to step up and do a little bit better. Right. Demand more. Let's work a bit harder getting that ball into the box and getting it on target. Because we're good enough to do it. And we've been getting in the right positions for it. But we need to do a bit more. I mean, Douglas Louise is struggling. Buendia isn't having the best of games. Luca Digne is not having a good game as well. So we need to keep an eye on a few of these. Archie Gray, again, one of our better performers, the 18, 19-year-old. I can't remember how old he is, but he's certainly a teenager. Right. Let's get the ball off of them, shall we? Right. Vicario. Gets to Van de Ven, who we are set to pressure, but he didn't pressure him enough there. And it's Davies now getting it to Son, who's now being marked by Ayer into Madison. Madison, who gets it back to San. Kamara gets it back to Martinez. Lovely work from Kamara there, by the way. Launched out, which I'm not a massive fan of, but Lamar does get onto the end of the ball here. Lamar, that's got to be offside for Wahi. It is. It is. It's not given. The, 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 the linesman's over here with his flag up. Million miles offside. Really disappointing from Wahi there that he strayed so offside. Really, really disappointing. The defensive line having a field day with him. Um... I am going to change him, and I'm going to change him to maybe not a pressing forward, but I want to, I want to try something different with him because he keeps doing that. I mean, let's try him with a pressing forward because that does start a little bit deeper. So let's try him as a pressing forward for the rest of the game, and let's see what happens. I mean, I'll be honest with you. 
A draw against Spurs wouldn't be the worst result in the world. Douglas Luiz in the box here, by the way. Douglas Luiz to Lamar. Went for the worldie. And he's got a corner. So we've got a chance to get another goal. Well, to get a goal here. Right. Buendia looking to whip it in. Can he get it on the head of Bial or Mings? Mings is there. It's over. It's way over, apparently. Right. Substitute o'clock. Let's have a look. Right. Digne having a poor game. Miranda can come on. And again, we'll just make sure that Miranda is set to be doing his defensive duty. He is indeed, which is fantastic. Um, and then, I mean, Douglas Luiz had a really poor one today. So John McGinn can come on for him. And then Wandia has not had the best game. So Musa Diaby can come on and hopefully do something. Or hopefully he'll have a decent game. Bubakar Kamara, I think we need to calm down a little bit. Because he's not looking particularly happy out there. I am just going to have a quick chat with him. Just encourage him. And hopefully that will set him right. Looks like it has done. I'm going to demand more from the rest of the team. Because we can win this very, very much so. Come on, boys. Let's go. I'll take a draw. I'll be happy with a draw. But we've got enough about us to get a win here. And we really should be capitalising on that. Right. Fire up the boys for the last 10 minutes. Final change. Uh, we've got some tired legs out there. Why he's not had the best game, not the worst game. No, he's actually probably gotten worse since we changed him. So I'm going to keep him on. I mean, Diaby's not had a great game since he's come on either. Tyron Ming's having a poor one. So I'm going to bring Mark Gray on. Let's just give Mark Gray a chance. Ball playing defender. I mean, he doesn't actually have a preference about playing on the right or the left. So let's play him on the left and let's just see if he can do that. He's nervous, which is a bit of a problem. But we will encourage him in the hope that he's able to deal with it. Again, I see Gwehi and Bial as an unlikely potential future partnership. But it's difficult when we've got Torres still in the team. And Elia Wahi might have just scored the winner in the 81st minute. And our decision to keep him on the pitch and to start him in this game might have just paid off. I'm really struggling to see the ball, I have to say. Right. Miranda gets to Lamar. Lamar gets to the byline. Cuts it across. The keeper has an absolute mare. The defenders have a mare. And Elia Wahi makes it 1-0 late on at Villa Park. I did not see that coming. I thought we were heading to a draw. Might still be. Who knows. Um, Archie Gray has gone down from a 7 to a 6.9 by the way. Um, we are in the 90th minute. It's now or never for Spurs. Four minutes of added time. This will put us level on points. We table top as Manchester City. We've closed the gap with them. And Elia Wahi, who had a goal disallowed, advanced forward is his position because he scored four against Real Madrid and then he scored one in this game after having one disallowed. And it's a clean sheet as well. That is the thing I'm even more happy about that's just dawned on me. It's a clean sheet against a top four, top five team. And as you see, Man City have obviously dropped points because we are now level with points Level on points with them, I should say. I'll get my words twisted there. What a performance that is. What an absolute performance that is. And we did batter them. I mean, possession-wise, they were better. But we absolutely battered them. Matty Cash out for two weeks. That's not ideal. That's not ideal at all. Right, Elio Wahi, I think we have to rest him for the next game. I think we just have to. I'll give him a five-day rest. Thomas Lamar starting to put in those performances that he did last season. Again, it makes it very difficult for Jacob Ramsey because Jacob Ramsey plays there or there. And the two players who are playing there or there, the last game notwithstanding for Douglas Louise, are having lovely times. But Matty Cash will be missing. It does mean that Christopher Ayer is going to have to step out. Bubakar Kamara, who did, to be fair, play reasonably well in that last game. So I think we'll just have to make sure I is set to full back and I'll start training him as a right back. As a fullback on support as well. I would try and be fancy and have him cutting in. But I just... I don't want to do that as a makeshift thing. I'd rather be that part of the team. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah. What a what a pair of games that is. Um, and it leads to a nearly unbeaten October. Which could be completed. If we can beat Watford in the Carabao Cup in the next game. 100% um, October I should say as well. So that will lead to the question of when we will be back. Well I think... We might come back either in December or January. We might come back somewhere in this region. Maybe for the FA Cup third round at this point. Um, we've played the biggest game in the Champions League. I mean, I do have those two. I could come back from one of those. Maybe both. Who knows? 
Bayern Munich could be quite fun. Bayern Munich is a team that Villa played in that cup final. The one that that shirt's from. European Cup. That could be quite fun. So maybe we won't come back for the FA Cup. Maybe we'll come back here. So that's a huge set of games that we'll play that you guys aren't going to see. But I'm tempted to do that. So it will be January. I'll sit on that. I'll have a think about that. But that could be a lot of fun. But that'll be for next time. So until then. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to leave a like on the video if you have enjoyed. And don't forget to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. I've now hit 200 subscribers. Let's make it to 300. You could be one of them. I've been Stu. You guys have been awesome. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.